People have been looking for a way to make the iPad a laptop replacement. And now that we have mouse and trackpad support, there's just one thing holding them back, the apps. And I'm going to tell you how you can make your iPad feel more like a laptop than it has before. iPad OS 13.4 brought mouse and trackpad support to the iPad, bringing the laptop replacement reality a little closer. Apple also introduced the iPad Magic Keyboard for iPad Pro with a built-in trackpad as well as worked with Logitech to create the Combo Touch for less expensive iPads. Now that we essentially have a laptop form factor for iPad, we need to look at why the apps make this feel like less of a laptop. When I think of my most used apps, they all kind of boil down to YouTube or video, social networking, shopping, account management, and utilities. If you are like most people, you probably figured that if there was an app available for the iPad on the App Store, you would probably get a better experience with the app versus using the web page. And before iPad OS, you may have been right. But iPad OS brought desktop class browsing to the iPad, which means we are now served a computer version in Safari instead of a blown up mobile version for your phone. This means websites that may have acted weird or were more difficult to use on the iPad compared to the app are now fully functional sites. Mouse and trackpad support from iPadOS 13.4 have now been fully baked into Safari by Apple compared to the third-party apps you are using. Let's take a look at YouTube as an example. Some things have been fixed in the iPad app and you can now scrub through the timeline with the trackpad, but it's more limited. In Safari, you can hover over the timeline and get a preview before clicking to watch that portion. Using Safari, you can also use a remapped escape key to exit full screen video. And if you are a YouTube Premium subscriber, you can get picture in picture video and have a floating window with a video playing and continue to work on something else. And yes, picture in picture works on Netflix too. When we look at social apps on Safari like Twitter or Nextdoor, you can get a fuller layout of the page with much better use of the space. And if you use a Safari content blocker, less ads. Shopping apps like Best Buy and Amazon are better in Safari when it comes to opening multiple windows. You can compare items, view lists, or you can select text wherever you want, unlike in the native apps. Apps like Verizon, Walgreens, and others don't need to be sitting on my device, potentially sharing my location data for no good reason when they add little to no advantage over using the websites. Then there's also some apps that don't even have the same amount of features in the application as they do on the website. For example, I use Canva to make thumbnails and title cards, which has more limited options in the app like making animations. With Safari, I am not limited in how I modify objects or what types of objects I can create. Other benefits to using Safari over native apps could be reducing notifications if you have apps on your phone too, ability to zoom into a website with a trackpad pinch, saving bookmarks to specific items, read or view for simpler formatting and removing ads, less background updates from apps, and probably better battery life. Yes, there will always be native apps that you will need to have on the iPad, just like a laptop, like for photo editing, making videos, games, and things like smart home devices that were only built around apps. Now there will undoubtedly also still be websites here and there that still may not work as well on iPad. But my suggestion is that you start looking at apps that do have well-known web interfaces and see how they compare to the native app you are using. I think you'll be surprised by how well they work. One negative to using Safari over the apps is that you may have to log in more frequently to the websites than you would in the app. I find this to be much less of an issue using a physical keyboard on the iPad, but even less so using a password manager like Keychain or LastPass and having Face ID or Touch ID enabled. Another negative is offline access to certain things like videos or files. So you may need to plan for times when you are unable to be connected. So if you are looking for ways to replace your laptop with an iPad, look no further than Safari. Safari has a consistent user experience across sites, gets Apple's latest input updates, and can even provide more features than you would get from a native app. As for myself, using the iPad with a trackpad and iPad OS has completely changed how I use my iPad and turned it into a real laptop replacement for almost everything I do. If you look at your laptop usage right now, you will probably realize you spend more time in the browser than anything else. And that is the key to making your iPad feel more like a laptop than ever before. Hey, thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons below. If you have other suggestions to making your iPad feel more like a laptop, let me know in the comments. You can follow me on Twitter at Jerry Schultz for video updates, and I'll see you next time.